happy June 12th of 2023. We'll be beginning our 25th year as a charter school in Kansas City. You know, you walk in here, you fall in love with it. I can't, I can't imagine being anywhere else. You, you just fall in love with it. You fall in love with the kids. You fall in love with the staff. I wake up every day just blessed that I get to come to work here. It is my second home. The whole classroom, it's like my family. My favorite thing about my classroom family is that we have two little pictures of my whole classroom in the third grade class when they were in second grade. In 1999, Dorothy Curry and Sue Jarvis were working with Operation Breakthrough. And then that year they applied to be a charter school and it actually started in the basement of a church. Um, and they took, what they were wanting to do is after preschool from Operation Breakthrough, they wanted to give these children additional things that they weren't getting in the regular system, an opportunity to have those. And so Gordon Parks was born from that. Gordon Parks had a relationship with Dorothy Curry and it was a long-standing relationship. What really came of it was his social activism and using his camera as his tool to bring light to what was happening in his community, to give it a voice. We were thinking about uh, Gordon Parks and his legacy when um, thinking through the process of teaching kids about photography and we thought about some of the, um, the the strategies that Gordon Parks used in his own photography of how to make an image as kind of a, a jumping off point an inspiration point for the students. We made cameras out of boxes. We had a box and then we had to fold it, but then we had we covered it with black tape and then we had to drill a hole in one of the sides so it could take a picture. It was interesting to see the kids learning the process of photography in a completely analog way. From the pinhole camera work that we did to build the boxes um, to the sun prints the, the day that we were out when it was, what, 10 degrees outside and everyone was dancing around trying to stay warm as they were exposing their, their prints to the sunlight. I don't think I've been this excited since the Halo Project, which is the gallery project in the main hallway, because this was kid-centered. Everything about this was the kids. You know, going to Kaleidoscope and watching them with the sun prints and watching them with the pinhole cameras and everybody was engaged. All of them are used to seeing cell phone camera images. So for them to be able to see that like photography is actually light responding to uh, a chemical process, um, it's a really interesting way to learn that. Ready? One, two, three. You know, just even seeing their surprise in what can happen in that process, I thought that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Working with kids that like their creativity and their voice and what, what comes out of it is just such an exciting part of that process. Like you can teach kids how to use the tools and, you know, what the general idea of it is, but then it's like it's their own expression that comes out of it. That's such a, a wonderful gift to be able to see that. I tell you something that I've found so cute is the kids were saying so we're going to take pictures well my mama won't let me use her cell phone i said baby no you said <laughs> because our kids kindergarten yeah. they're five six all they know is taking pictures with cell phones yeah. they don't know they said cameras and they came in with cameras and they were showing them how to look at camera and they were looking Ooh, I can see. you know they really had no idea what a professional camera looked like mm -hmm. even when they got the ones to take home they're looking at it we took a tour around the building we got an extra camera from dr clippo took a tour and each one got to hold the camera look through it see it push the little thing see the light come on and they're like yeah i mean it was just a new thing to them it wasn't a cell phone you know, it wasn't a selfie. You know, I'm looking here and I'm taking these pictures. And then when they bought it back and they said, so what are they going to do? How the pictures are going to get out? I said, well, it's called development. And we talked about it. And then when they saw the pictures of their puppies, oh, yeah. especially the puppies, they love taking pictures of their pets. But it, it just blew their mind that I saw my puppy through that hole. Mm -hmm. And there's a picture. <laughs> This yes. is something, I mean, it just yeah. was amazing because kids in the cell phone thing, that's, that's the only way they know about mm -hmm. pictures, but that whole thing, especially when the photographers came to the room, mm -hmm. did you look at that thing? Did you see that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can see you, Ms. Williams. You know. <laughs> we made cameras. Tell me about that. So we put our eye in the little square and we took a picture. I took my camera home, and it was a whole experiment. We took, my, me and my mom took pictures together, 
and it was very fun. We take pictures that make us happy. Yeah, mom and dad. Yeah, siblings. 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 Pets. Pets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those pets. Most of the time, those were the favorite. Which one do you like uh, best? No. My puppy, my donkey. Yeah. So I, when I took a picture, I took a picture of my desk, my bed, and, my and Reggie, my dog. Why did you take a picture of those things? Um, because I wanted to. I took a picture of my baby sister because she looked cute. I took Lucy to take a picture of it because I, because it was the only thing I could think of, and it is really special to me. Me and my mom were just two. Our birthdays are two days apart, so uh, I just took a picture of those balloons because I thought it was special. I took the picture of McDonald's. Why did you take a picture of McDonald's? Because I love McDonald's. It's so good. I took a picture of Diddy's. Okay, so what are the, some of the ones? My mom, my uncles, and yeah, and my mom, and then me and my uncles too. Seeing the the um, students go from understanding about photography um, to actually doing photography and then they're going to get to see their work. So it's been, it's a long road, but it's been a great road to help kids understand, help them see the world, you know, through a lens, you know, which is a lot of what Gordon Parks was, was all about. It's an overused cliche about a picture worth a thousand words. Gordon really knew how to bring out many, many words, many, many stories from just one picture. It's it very difficult to separate the man from his work because the work was the man. His legacy is everything. His legacy is everlasting. It's, it's continuing to grow because he's a pioneer. It was so much, uh, not just in one field. It's common to be successful in one field, such as photography, but it's not common to be successful in all the fields he did, photography, filmmaking, music, poetry, even professional basketball player. It, I think Gordon uh, had that creativity without any doubt, but he had that uh, resilience about him that a story continues to live well because it's a great story to tell others, especially the younger generation, about overcoming obstacles. Gordon faced challenges and obstacles I never could imagine. He didn't know barriers. He didn't know roadblocks. I wanted to find out who the essence of Gordon Parks was. Those, that's his story, and those are the facts and the things that he did throughout his life, but I wanted to experience who he was as a person. He didn't let anything stop him. That inspires me. What do you think his thoughts and feelings would be about the work, or specifically this project, but the work that's happening with these students at Gordon Parks in, in his honor? I think he'd love it. He would jump right in the middle and help them and get to be good friends with any and all of them and treat them like royalty. Treat them as important and want to have their signatures and want to have a sample of everything they made. <laughs> take it home and have it be his own. What the children did with their pictures lined so beautifully because what they did is they brought light to things that are happening in their homes and their community, even the school community. Some of the kids pick pictures here that no one really realizes. When people think about a school, what they see are the APR scores the state puts out or they see the tour they got for 20 minutes and they don't really get to see and really experience what the kids are learning and their voices. And that's what this did, and it lined beautifully with Gordon Parks because every piece of work he did, whether it was photographing his siblings or his, his own family or outside in his own community, it lined up with giving a voice to and a, and a vision to what was happening. And our kids were able to do that same thing. And that's why it's so powerful. That's why it's such a beautiful project. Memories are, are like, like dreams. You can only remember them for so long. And if you have something to remind you that you have that you have that, then you can keep that those memories forever.